fungi are perhaps the most earthy of organisms. They can appear in many strange shapes and colours. The bulk of their body lies under the ground or inside dead wood and consists of a network of mycelial threads. What we commonly call mushrooms are the fruiting structures of fungi, which burst into the open air in order to distribute their spores. Unlike plants, fungi do not photosynthesize, but make their living breaking down dead wood, bark, and other organic detritus. In this way, fungi help to release essential minerals like phosphorus back into biospherical circulation. Despite dwindling habitats, there is one kind of fungus which has managed to thrive by the wayside. Its properties can only be described as extraordinary. This is our antidote, the psilocybin mushroom, of which there are roughly 100 species worldwide. Psilocybin is the name of the alkaloid within the mushroom which, in conjunction with the human cortex, can induce a powerful and life-changing spiritual experience. For this reason, psilocybin is nowadays classified as entheogenic, that is, a substance able to temporarily sanctify the human psyche. Psychoactive mushrooms of one kind or another have long held a place in folklore and literature. In Alice in Wonderland, for example, Alice eats a mushroom in order to change size. But our psilocybin story concerns the legacy of this man, Gordon Wasson. Having spent 30 years investigating the cultural use of mushrooms, Wasson travelled to Mexico in 1955 to learn more about the sacred mushroom ceremonies reportedly occurring there. Wasson had to seek the aid of a shaman, for it is the shaman who, traditionally, holds knowledge of entheogenic plants. Under the guidance of a shaman named Maria Sabina, Wasson became the first European on record to consume psilocybin, an auspicious occasion to say the least. Wasson was so amazed by the visionary effects of the Mexican mushroom that he went on to write a popular article about his experiences thereby informing the world of this strange new natural resource. Subsequently, samples of the mushroom were grown in the laboratory. The active ingredient was isolated and thence named. The writer Aldous Huxley also experienced psilocybin and wrote of its virtues. In his last book, a utopian novel entitled Island, a sacred mushroom known as Moksha medicine is employed as a sacrament and yet Huxley never realised just how widespread his beloved moksha medicine was, that it was not restricted to Mexico, but was to be found growing throughout the very island of his birth. This is the kind of idyllic habitat which the European psilocybin mushroom favours, the lake district in the heart of the British Isles, the kind of mystical landscape conjured up in Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. It is here in the wild meadows and pristine green valleys and alongside the paths walked by Wordsworth that psilocybin mushrooms can be found. Diminutive and half-hidden, overlooked by most visitors, the entheogenic mushroom is part of one of Mother Nature's more undercover operations, a gift of healing and transcendence delivered through stealth. Historically, psilocybin mushroom use has been associated with the spectacular Mayan and Aztec civilizations in and around Mexico. These Mayan relics, for instance, known as mushroom stones, are thought to indicate the Maya's reverence for psilocybin. South of Mexico, in Colombia, native cultures crafted numerous gold statues adorned with strange circular motifs. On the back of this statue, however, are some thin stems which confirm that psilocybin mushrooms are represented. Likewise, in ancient India, hundreds of religious hymns were dedicated to Soma, a divine plant without root or leaf. Many Vedic scholars now believe that the legendary Soma was an entheogenic mushroom of some kind. And what of this, the Festos disc? Unearthed in Crete, the mysterious disc is believed to be a religious artifact 
dating back to 1700 BC. It is imprinted with various images. Actually, it is the oldest example of printing ever found. The various icons stamped into its surface have yet to be deciphered. One side of the disc bears images with an uncanny resemblance to European psilocybin mushrooms. Even the stem is pictured. As yet, however, historians have failed to acknowledge and to investigate this compelling resemblance. Despite their illustrious role as a sacrament, psilocybin fungi remain illegal in many parts of the world. In America, for example, whilst it is legal to possess a loaded gun, it is illegal to possess the mushroom. In Britain and many parts of Europe, the mushroom has escaped prohibition as long as it is not processed in any way. However, since poisonous mushrooms may be picked by mistake by an interested seeker, psilocybin fungi have understandably remained on the periphery of culture. They are truly a thing of the wild and do not lend themselves to mass market consumerism. Yet the incredible psychological effects of this mushroom demand our attention. It's as if we had spent our lives holed up in a dark cave and were being cajoled outside in order to get a better perspective on the meaning of life. So what's it actually like to step outside the confines of conventionally perceived reality? To answer this, we must now venture to the very heart of the psilocybin experience. It begins as with all significant voyages, with feelings of trepidation. Once the journey is commenced, there is no going back. To consume psilocybin is to consume the truth, and one must be prepared to accept all that follows in the wake of the sacramental act. As the effects proceed, there may be a short period of mild disorientation. Body and soul are forcibly swept to a new dimension more real than ordinary reality. On the way, Cultural conditioning is shed like old skin. Traditional modes of cognition and perception give way to an entirely novel form of consciousness. As feelings of disorientation pass, it seems as if one's nervous system has been retuned. It's like waking up or even being reborn. One eventually arrives at a state of mind so enhanced, so coherent, that the interconnectedness of all things becomes breathtakingly apparent. With eyes wide open, everything radiates fractal beauty. One is reminded of Tibetan mandalas, geometrical Islamic artwork, and the interwoven design so prominent in Celtic art. With eyes closed, colourful visions unfold, so complex and so laden with intent, as to suggest communion with a transcendental intelligence. As the journey continues, there is a tremendous feeling of being empowered, of being privy to the miracle of the living moment. Profound insights flow through the opened mind. Conscious existence seems more like a precious gift than a side effect of brain activity, a gift granted by a deliberately and exquisitely configured universe. is thrust deeper and deeper into the mystery of being. As the entheogenic action of psilocybin reaches its peak, sacred realms of experience become accessible, and of this little can be conveyed in words. We are not alone and isolated. Nothing is isolated. We are each a uniquely evolving pattern of energy and information, born within a vast system of purposeful intelligence, which we call nature. Psilocybin fungi are far too controversial and too wild to ever become a popular part of the human diet. Nonetheless, the ecological message conveyed by psilocybin is worthy of our attention regardless of how one personally judges such a substance.
Fungi are perhaps the most earthy of organisms. They can appear in many strange shapes and colours. The bulk of their body lies under the ground or inside dead wood and consists of a network of mycelial threads. What we commonly call mushrooms are the fruiting structures of fungi, which burst into the open air in order to distribute their spores. Despite dwindling habitats, there is one kind of fungus which has managed to thrive by the wayside. Its properties can only be described as extraordinary. This is our antidote, the silk. Unlike plants, fungi do not photosynthesize, but make their living breaking down dead wood, bark, and other organic detritus. In this way, fungi help to release essential minerals like phosphorus back into biospherical circulation.